Today we're at the University of Vermont greenhouses and we'll visit a local greenhouse to learn about biological pest control and how growers are using this to make the plants you buy safer and our planet a safer place to live. Hi, I'm Leonard Perry with University of Vermont Extension and with me to start off and explain just what biological control is, is Colleen Armstrong, the greenhouse manager. Thanks so much, Colleen. You're welcome. I know you've uh, been doing this for many years now and have quite a bit of experience. I have. I've actually used biological control or using natural enemies to control pests for over 30 years in greenhouses. Well, that's before it was uh, quite the popular thing it is now in, in greenhouses. So uh, how, did, how did it all start out? Um, it really started out with insect pests becoming resistant to pesticides. So when we had the broad spectrum pesticides like DDT and lots of beneficials got wiped out, but the pests themselves actually developed an ability to still survive even though they were exposed to the pesticide and they looked for an entirely different strategy. So scientists identified and went to the origins of those pests to so those countries and looked for either predators, um, insects or even microbi microbes to um, predate, to feed on those pests um, or they looked for parasitoids. So Organisms uh, like wasps that would oviposit their young, place their young in the pest and use that as the host food for the next generation to develop. And from there, they looked at the risks that it pre presented to the environment in terms of introducing these new organisms, set up a strategy to be able to evaluate them, and started to commercially breed them and make them available for greenhouse growers to use for greenhouse pest control. Well, it sounds like a lot of research has gone on. I know there's a lot more information now than there was 10 years ago, even 20 years ago. I know we were talking before that um, 10 years ago, I didn't see that much. 20 years ago, almost nothing. And like you said, I think 30 years ago, you were a radical if you yeah, did this. Yeah, this is true. More and more greenhouse growers are using biological controls. Um, they have fewer pesticides to use. And often they can use a pesticide along with a biological control, so the two are compatible. And that's some of the most exciting research that's going on. Um, looking to be able to have you know, a very clean, pest-free plant, but using maybe one, two, or three different treatments, um, biological, cultural, or a safer pesticide to be able to control the pest. Well, that was interesting. One comment you made early on, how these uh, really toxic pesticides wiped out the good insects that we're feeding on, and a lot of those are ones we're using now. We're feeding on the bad ones, and the bad ones actually stayed around developed resistance. Yeah. So very yeah. interesting how that happened. Well, insects are successful animals because they have such short generations, and so you, know, you have that adaptation going on at a fairly rapid rate. And I think that's another advantage of the biological as the insects, the bad ones, change their resistance, then the good ones can adapt too to the bad ones. I mean, there's not like a pesticide. You have one, it kills insect this way, it changes, and then the pesticide's no good. You have to start with something different. That's true. And they do look at different biological controls for the same pest so that if one is not successful, you may be able to use another. And the other thing I thought uh, that was fascinating too, and uh, having heard some of this before is you mentioned how some of these um, actually attack, lay their eggs or the young and others. Sounds like a real good topic for a sci-fi film. It's, it is. I often say to undergraduates that it is biological warfare. And, and if you look at it underneath a dissecting scope, I mean, you see uh, a very pointy ovipositor from a wasp, you know, plunging into the pest and goo and all kinds of stuff coming out, Boy. so it's pretty bad. <laughs> we won't go into any more details <laughs> now, but in general, some of the key pests you have here, I know you've had a lot of experience here at the UVM Greenhouse because there are just so many plants, and I'm sure they attract a lot of different pests, so you, you, you've really needed to do this, plus it's a public space. You can't really use, even in the past, a lot of toxic chemicals. So what are some of the key pests uh, that you fight here? Aphids, um, they suck on the plant leaves, and, and leaf tips. We have thrips, which is a serious insect pest because it carries different diseases in its mouth parts. 
two-spotted spider mite and other mites, injurious mites, and then we also have mealybugs and scale on some of the tropical permanent collection. Fungus gnats um, growing, coming out of the soil, particularly in the spring. Less so, we have white fly, but on occasion we do. Some of those pests have multiple different species in that category, so there's literally thousands of aphids. And some biological controls are host specific, so it, the pest organism has to, there has to be a match between those two. Um, so it is, in some regards, general predators like praying mantis will feed on everything. But the little uh, wasp that parasitizes whitefly, one is very effective on greenhouse whitefly, but not on some of the other whiteflies. So it can be specific or general. Okay, so you really kind of have to know, you can't just say, this is an aphid, I'm gonna use this. You have to kind of almost know you what kind do. it gets into, a little, little bit more involved. And I guess that's where a lot of growers, I see them at meetings that we hold for them, uh, really soaking up this knowledge to try to figure out just how to do it properly. I think that is the stumbling block, that you have to know the biology of both the pest and the natural enemy, and making sure that you have the right match between the two. Yeah. So Colleen, how do you know uh, what pests you have here? Well, um, the big picture, biological controls fit into a program called integrated pest management, using multiple strategies to control pests. But you have to start by identification. And students are trained here to learn how to identify all the different stages of insect pests, and also to look at trap cards, like the one that we have over here. They attract many of our most common insect pests, and then the students will come and identify them. They also will look underneath leaves for new growth, mature growth, senescent growth, and look for pests there. Great, so the trap card is just a, the yellow color attracts a pest, I assume, and then they stick to it with that sticky substance. It's a vegetable resin, and they're, they're there. Now that you've identified what you have from the sticky cards, what's the next step? The next step is what's the most practical way to get rid of them? And it could be a cultural step like washing the plant down. But we may also decide to release a beneficial insect or maybe a beneficial mite. And in the example that I'm gonna give right now is for two-spotted spider mite. We, we found the pest on the plant, on the underside of the leaves, so we order predaceous mites. And so these predaceous mites come in a bottle mixed with a carrier of vermiculite. And we sprinkle the vermiculite with the predator mite mixed in on the leaves where we've seen the two-spotted uh, dangerous mite. And then those predators efficiently go about searching for the pest mite, feed on them. And we will make one, two, or three um, releases, sprinkles, uh, over two, every two week interval um, for multiple treatments. Because those pests keep producing and if you miss some the first time, you get them the next time with the next. Exactly, they might be at a stage where the predator doesn't find it. And you can tell these are small because it says there are 2,000 in there here, 2, so that's a lot. They are, you often need a 10 power field glass to see most of these beneficial insects and mites. So they've done their job, they've taken care of the bad insects, what happens to them then? For many of them, they feed on the pest, and when their food source is gone, that population dies, so the beneficial mite dies. It is not established in the greenhouse. Therefore, over a year's time, you might make multiple introductions of the same predaceous mite. So if you get the bad mites again, the two spotted, whatever, then you have to order up or get in some more of these to treat them again. They That's just right. don't stick around. That's right. And uh, if they die, then obviously they're not going to stick around. You mentioned earlier too that all the research that goes into this, they make sure if these aren't natural, found naturally around, that they're not going to be invasive. Exactly. That is some of the first questions that are asked before a beneficial organism is developed as a commercially available biological control. Well good, well speaking of growers, let's take a short visit to a local greenhouse, Clausens in Colchester, to see what they're using for biological pest control. Here at 
Claussen's, we are implementing a biological control program in which we are using all sorts of natural predators to fight the bad bugs here, uh, such as um, Amblyses cucumris, which is a predatory mite, very microscopic, that goes into a sachet on a basket that will come out through a hole in the sachet and onto the plant to feed. And we are doing, uh, we have banker baskets of aphidias, which is a small parasitizing wasp that will actually make a mummy into an aphid where a new parasitizing wasp will come out and we have aureus banker baskets which is an aureus is also known as the pirate bug which will um, eat all sorts of aphids, thrips, spider mite, other eggs and they can also live their life just on the pollen so we have special baskets made up just for those that are throughout the greenhouses that the customers will see so they can see how the procedure is working. Aphidias baskets are oat. It's a Vermont organic oat that we used. And our Oreos basket is in um, alyssum called Lobularia, which is a very aggressive alyssum. And also we use an ornamental pepper called Purple Flash. And we use those two because they have a high pollen count, which is important to keep our Oreos happy. I've been here at Clausen's for 16 years and I've literally been working with UVM for 16 years. Um, I've helped them with, they do all kinds of research here. I've been hands-on in helping them with research. And through UVM, they have um, their entomology research lab. They do IPM workshops every year, which they have phenomenal speakers that come in and talk. Um, they presentations, it's hands-on learning, microscopes. They are helping us, educating us, and making, trying to make everybody aware of the benefits of using natural predators to try to make that switch over from chemicals to natural releasing. And it's, it's, they are awesome. I can call them at any time, uh, any questions. Um, they've just really been the backbone to helping me get this program off the ground. Well, Colleen, we've seen what Clausen's is doing. How would you compare them to the rest of the industry? Are they kind of in the forefront or? They are. Right there? <laughs> they are leaders in the field, um, particularly in Vermont, in terms of using the number of biological controls for their production. However, more and more greenhouse growers nationally are using biological controls. Newer pesticides on the market are very expensive, um, often compatible with the biological controls so that the grower can use both of them together. And um, we are seeing more and more production facilities relying on biological controls. I think especially with food crops, there's a lot more uh, than we used to see in the past, vegetable production under covered structures, greenhouses, if you will, of <laughs> all sorts like this, making these steam noises and such. Um, I assume they're using these biologicals too. Especially in Vermont. In Vermont, we have more and more local food being produced in unheated or heated greenhouses, vegetable crops like tomatoes and peppers and lettuce. Those growers rely on biological controls even more because you are constrained in terms of what you could use as a pesticide, and often they don't want to use any pesticide. So yes, they're being used a lot in Vermont. Well, what about the home gardener, uh, both indoors and out? Outdoors? Indoors it's difficult because our homes are dry and we usually don't have a lot of plants inside. Outdoors, more and more gardeners are using biological controls because they're becoming better educated about them. Um, they tend to use the general predators, the praying mantis. Um, you know, sometimes they'll look to see if they can find a, a beneficial that could eat more than one pest, such as the praying mantis. So basically, a local uh, check with local uh, full-service garden stores or online for these. Exactly, both of those. Um, easier online, but we definitely have local, regional. And some specialists out there now that That's do this. Right. So, well, thank you so much for your time today. And I know you're around here at the UVM Greenhouse, and people can come here and visit, and they can ask you questions if they'd like.
like to learn more and maybe how they do it and how more about how you do it? Yeah. They certainly can. They can come by and ask anybody on our staff because everybody's trained to really be able to use biological controls. And we have a website and uh, we have some information there as well. Well, great. Well, again, thank you so much, Colleen, for spending time with us today on this great topic. And thank you for watching today on Across the Fence. For University of Vermont Extension, I'm Leonard Perry. For a video copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-ATF-3430. Across the Fence is brought to you as a public service by University of Vermont Extension and WCAX-TV.